What is up guys, welcome back to another full workout vlog. Today we're gonna be hitting legs and we're gonna be doing our pre and post workout meals together. On leg day, your pre-workout meal is so important. So we're gonna get that dialed. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. And we're gonna be doing some recipes from my new training app. So I'm stoked to show you guys these. Let's make some food. Well, there you go, we got our pre-workout meal, six egg whites, one full egg. Um, I don't actually eat the seventh egg. I uh, actually just give the egg yolk to my dog. Uh, but then we've got oats, a half cup of oats, and um, one banana. So we're trying to prioritize carbs with the oats and the banana um, for leg day. So carbs are gonna be what fuels our workout, and today is a big leg day, so we gotta get that done. Protein's gonna be what puts us in that anabolic state during the workout, so we're prioritizing that as well um, with the seven eggs and we've got a full scoop of Alpha Lion's uh, whey protein. So I'll throw the macros up on the screen and we'll see you at the gym. You wanna go to the gym with me? Okay, so as always, when we get to the gym, the first thing we wanna do is get the blood moving um, in our whole body, but also in the specific area that we're looking to train. So today we're gonna hop on the stationary bike uh, for about five minutes just to get the blood going. Um, and like I said, get, get the blood moving in our legs. I mentioned it before, but this also helps prevent injuries and it actually increases performance in the gym. So definitely if you've been skipping your five minute warm up to save time, I'd definitely reconsider that. Okay, the next thing you want to do on a leg day um, is do some dynamic stretching here before we jump into our first movement, which today is going to be back squat. The first thing I like to do is just do some static uh, squat sits here, and I'll, I'll rock from side to side, kind of get some hip mobility um, action in this as well. Just get comfortable sitting down in that deep squat. And then from this position, I'm going to do some hip openers. You're going to take your hand, um, grab the opposite leg, and then twist up pointing to the ceiling. We're gonna repeat this a couple times before jumping into some leg swings. So I'm gonna start by doing some leg swings facing the bar and just really focusing again on opening up our hips here, getting them ready for that heavy squat. I'm gonna do both sides and then I'm gonna to switch to some leg swings where I'm actually parallel with the bar here um, and I'm kind of swinging forward in front of me. Now after this, I usually hit a foam roller um, to roll up my legs, but I didn't have one today. Um, so I brought my massage gun with me and that's just gonna be a good alternative for me. You know, if I don't have access to a foam roller, I'll just I'll just use the massage gun and I'll hit every part, you know, my quads, my hamstrings, my calves, before moving on to our first warm-up set. Form's huge on back squat. Um, we, we, we wanna prevent injuries and we wanna prioritize form. And admittedly, like my, my squat form could definitely use some work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the bar and do a, a full squat a couple full squats just with the bar, really focusing on form. And we wanna kinda of see the form maintained throughout, you know, the pyramiding here of adding weight. So I'm gonna go from just the bar to 135, do that for two, three, maybe four, four reps before moving on to 225, and then up to a 275, slowly getting uh, more comfortable with a heavier weight here. And then finally, we're gonna, we're gonna use 315 here for our working set. I'm using a lever belt here by Jim Reapers. Um, I do have a code with them. Um, if you use code PERK, you'll get 10% off. Uh, but if you don't have a good lifting belt and you're doing squats or heavy compound movements like this, you absolutely need one. So um, go check that out. Uh, the lever belts are amazing. I really enjoy those. So some cues on the squat here. We're gonna have our feet just about shoulder width, a little bit further maybe with our toes pointed out slightly. Um, and then we're gonna brace our core um, before we drop down. So that's just taking a deep breath and kind of pushing your diaphragm against the lifting belt. That's gonna keep everything tight as you complete the rep. So we're gonna take a deep breath in, we're gonna brace our core before descending, um, and we're gonna hold that breath in until we've pushed up through the top of the rep. So when we've come back up to the top, that's when we're gonna exhale, and then we're gonna take a deep breath again and repeat that. My working sets for squat, I'm gonna do four sets at six to eight reps, something like that. Okay, next we're gonna move on to another heavy compound movement, the Romanian deadlift. 
If you know me, this is one of my favorite movements for, for targeting hamstrings. It's one of my favorite compound movements just all around. It, it hits your lower back as well. It's, it's, it's an amazing movement. And this thing will destroy your hamstrings if you do this properly. One thing I will suggest is using lifting grips for these. Um, especially, you know, the heavier you go, you want to take your grip out of the equation like we've talked about before. Um, we don't want our grip to be a limiting factor. So we're going to use lifting grips here. I'm using lifting grips from Jim Reaper. Uh, and you can see that I'm standing on a plate here. I'm just trying to get a little bit more range of motion, just, you know, an inch or two with the, the plate here. So that's the reason for that. So after we unrack the weight, we're going to hinge at our hips. We're going to push our hips backwards um, and slowly lower the weight down kind of on our shins while maintaining a neutral spine. So you don't want to be looking up. You don't want to be looking down. You just want to be looking straight ahead. So it, as you come down, let your head come down. Keep your spine neutral. I usually hit these for four sets around eight to 10 reps. I'm focusing a little bit more on glutes today. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the reverse V squat. Now I know a lot of people when I post these videos of this, of this movement, um, they, they say they don't have access to this machine. Um, and so if you don't, I'm sure you have access to a, to a hack squat. So uh, you could do a reverse hack squat here. We're really focusing on getting good depth at the bottom of this here and, and targeting our glutes um, before exploding uh, back up to that starting position. Um, we're not going to go nearly as heavy as we did on our first back squat, um, but we are going to push ourselves. I usually do three sets around, you know, 10 to 12 reps, something like that. I'm really trying to grow my legs, okay? So we're going to do another pressing movement. Um, next, we're going to move on to a leg press. We're going to adopt a shoulder width stance here, basic shoulder width stance. I'm sure you've seen all the instructional videos about, you know, where to put your foot placement on, on the platform for leg press and how that targets different um, parts of your leg. So if you put your legs up high and wide, that's going to target your, your glutes a little bit more. And if you put your, your legs close together um, towards the bottom, that's going to that's gonna hit your quads a little bit more. So we're going somewhere in the middle, just a regular shoulder width stance, probably more quad focused um, than anything else. A little bit lighter on the weight again, but we are going to keep the RPE high. Um, and so we're going to go close to failure. I mean, leaving one to two, two reps in the tank here. So RPE eight, RPE nine, something like that. Three sets at, I don't know, eight to 10 reps. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day. We're going to double up on hamstring movements here. Um, we're going to do a standing leg curl. I played college football and I had a lot of tears in my hamstring. And you can actually see some of the scar tissue um, as I'm working my hamstrings here. That does not look normal. And it's like a, it's basically a minefield <laughs> from, from playing uh, college football. But so I've, I've really come a long way, really tried to strengthen my hamstrings because there was, there was such an injury there and there's so much damage there and scar tissue. Uh, and it actually caused a muscle imbalance in my lower back. So I've really been focusing on, ever since I've, you know, graduated college, I've really focused on lifting heavy with my hamstrings. So we're going to go heavy on these um, three sets, eight to 10 reps each leg. Hitting quads next, we're going to do leg extensions, pretty basic, but um, I will say you, you want to make sure that you keep your butt in the seat here. So those handles on the side are there for a reason. Um, so grab those handles, pull your butt tight into the seat, and you want to maintain that position as you extend your legs. I do like to go a little bit higher with the rep range um, for these, somewhere between 12, 15, sometimes even 20 reps for these. And we've already got some quad work in, so we're just kind of burning them out at this point. Um, really push yourself here though. And uh, you can, if you, if you kind of point your toes in while you're doing it, that's gonna target your outer quad a little bit more. Um, so I like to do a set of them straight and a set of them inward and a set of them outward just to mix it up and make sure I'm hitting every part of my quad. All right, we're gonna move on. I call this one the sus machine. Um, this is the abductor. We're gonna focus on hitting our glutes with these and it's one of the last movements that I do. And if I'm feeling up for it, I'll do it, but sometimes I'll just skip it. Um, but today for the sake of the leg day vlog, we're just gonna hit some um, three sets here, probably eight to 10 reps. Again, keep your butt in the seat, pull yourself down, try to stay upright with your upper body. You can lean forward slightly. Um, that is gonna help you get a little more leverage. Okay, we can't hit a leg day without hitting calves. I know that you're aware of that, but I will say I do sprinkle calves in to other workouts throughout the week. So I'm not hitting calves only once a week. Right now I'm hitting legs once a week, but that's because I recently switched from hitting legs twice a week to hitting legs once a week. So whatever muscle I feel like is lacking, I'm going to focus on that for a period of time. And then once I'm happy with that, then I'll switch to uh, the next muscle group that I think needs to come up a bit. So all that to say, you got to be hitting calves, um, no matter how many times you're hitting legs a week. If your calves need work, I would say two to three times a week. And you can sprinkle them, like I said, in 
at the end of other workouts. And that's it. Pretty simple leg day. We're going to hit the stationary bike just for a little bit afterwards, probably 20, 25 minutes, probably around 300 calories burned, something like that. I get a lot of comments on, oh, isn't that too much volume um, on, on most of my workouts, but but specifically my, my leg workouts. And I think that people just don't understand like 15 to 20 working sets a week is the standard for a, a beginner to intermediate. So if you're a more advanced trainee, 20 to 30 working sets a week is the sweet spot. And and even beyond that, like we don't maybe actually know the upper end of what is actually too much volume. And that differs from person to person. So I know people think that this is probably too much volume and it might be for them. It just depends on your level. Uh, but chances are you're seriously underestimating your amount of volume you can handle for hypertrophy. Okay, we're going to head home. We're going to make a post-workout meal from one of my recipes for my training program. So we'll see you back at the house. All right, so successful leg day. We're hitting our post-workout meal now. Thanks to my wife, my hands didn't shrink. That was my wife doing all the cooking. Um, that sounds really misogynistic. <laughs> uh, so as usual, I'll put the macros up on the screen. This is Sriracha Honey Garlic Chicken, and it's from my online training program. Um, if you're interested in that, check it out, perkfit.com, and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, oh, oh.